Hello then, a very warm welcome to the programme. Poland's government has appealed for calm after two people were killed by a missile that landed near the border with Ukraine. President Andrzej Duda said that the missile was Russian-made, but it wasn't clear who fired it. Some Polish military units have now been placed on heightened alert and aerial surveillance has been increased. Russia has said it did not carry out missile strikes near the Poland-Ukraine border. Howard Johnson reports. The aftermath of a reported airstrike on a Polish village close to the border with Ukraine that killed two people. Poland's president, Andrzej Duda, has said it's most likely that it was caused by a Russian-made missile, but also said that there was no conclusive evidence yet as to who launched the attack. But Russia's defence ministry has been quick to refute the claims, saying they amount to a deliberate provocation aimed at escalation. At the G20 meeting of world leaders in Bali, Indonesia, US President Joe Biden was asked if he believed the missile had been fired from Russia. There is preliminary information that contests that. I don't want to say that till we completely investigate. It's unlikely in the minds of the trajectory that it was fired from Russia, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who is also at the G20 talks, took to Twitter to say he'd spoken to Poland's president, adding, I reiterated the UK's solidarity with Poland and expressed condolences for the victims. We will remain in close contact and continue to coordinate with our NATO allies. The blast in Poland came on the same day Ukraine says it faced its heaviest wave of missile strikes from Russia in nearly nine months of war. There were attacks across the country, most of Ukraine's major cities were hit, causing widespread electricity outages. What world leaders decide to do next depends on the work of investigators still piecing together the series of events that led to the deadly blast. Howard Johnson, BBC News. The retired Major John Spencer is the Chair of Urban Warfare Studies with the Madison Policy Forum. He's in Colorado Springs in the United States for us. Um, John, there is a part, isn't there, of the North Atlantic Treaty that binds all NATO members to protect a country that has been attacked. Now, bearing in mind that we do not know the full story of this missile attack, in your view, are we at or are we approaching the point at which Article 5 may be triggered? No, I, I don't think so. I think it's a significant event. Um, I, I personally don't think that no matter of the scenarios which we believe, which we'll find out soon, happened that it was an intentional attack on a NATO member state that would cause, you know, a strike on one is a strike on all, an Article 5 um, situation, personally. But it's still a significant event, in my opinion, caused by Russia's illegal war in Ukraine, since it lost, it, you know, today was one of the biggest days of Russian attacks against civilian infrastructure over 90 plus, almost 100 cruise missiles or drones struck Ukraine today. Is there, with regard to the attack, um, the missile attack in Poland, is there a sort of a more likely scenario or a central case that's emerging at this stage? I mean, the, the of course, the online community is aghast with, with theories. I personally think there's two likely scenarios. One of those 100 cruise missiles uh, or other munitions launched by Russia at Ukraine today went off course because there was explosions in Lviv. Russia did strike eastern or western Ukraine. Or two, it was a Ukrainian intercept missile that went off as well, trying to intercept one of these Russian missiles attacking civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. Either one of those scenarios, in my opinion, is the fault of Russia who is continuing this illegal war where the UN had voted that the entire reason they're in Ukraine is against the UN charter. This has to have a response no matter what. Of course, the investigation needs to go through. We need to know exactly what happened, and I think we'll know that soon, but there has to be a response. Now, you have been to Ukraine since this conflict began. You have spoken to many members of the military. Did it surprise you what you found on the ground? 
absolutely surprised me the unity of the Ukrainian people to fight. Um, a, a military or a nation's ability to fight is made up of two things, their means and their will to fight. And when I visited like Kiev and Bucha and Erpin, places where the world has watched as Russia committed war crimes, validated by international community, um, and it still has to provide everything Ukraine needs, um, I was really surprised that, and this is why these missile strikes that Russia continues to do, his missile terrorism is, is going to have no effect on the will of the Ukrainian people to continue fighting and won't have an effect on the alliances that Ukraine has, this group of 50 plus nations, which I hope this event, no matter what is found, actually emboldens the support for Ukraine and they get some of the systems that they haven't gotten so far. Now, you visited Bucha, the town that in March suffered massacre, executions, torture, rape. There are eyewitness accounts, there's photographic evidence. Should NATO or the UN have intervened directly after Bucha? No, so unfortunately, the rules in which this conflict has moved forward has been under the rules that have been in place since after World War II, you know, the you know, NATO alliance, NATO member countries, but that shouldn't stop the United Nations and the world from helping Ukraine. Ukraine's never asked for anybody to intervene as in put tr boots on the ground. They've asked for, give us all the weapon systems so we ourselves can fight for freedom. Um, in my personal opinion, of course, if Putin would have been allowed to do, and there's been more than one Bucha to be clear, there's been multiple Bucha scenarios in Izium and Lyman and anywhere really the Russians have stopped. But Ukraine has asked for the weapons they need to achieve victory, which is a complete Russian withdrawal from Ukraine. And they've already shown the world that it's possible. They're achieving victory on the ground, but they still need things like the attackums, they need tanks and IFBs. Uh, they, the, the more the world sits back and, and incrementally arms Ukraine, the more people have died. And now people are dying in NATO country, in Poland, because um, this war continues. Major John Spencer, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Now, of course, um, Poland is a NATO member and here to discuss what that actually means is our reporter Azadeh Mashiri. Um, Azadeh, we, we speak a lot, don't we, about NATO, about this alliance, but it's, it's probably at this stage worth um, explaining exactly what that means, what NATO is, what it means to be a member and what the sort of the treaties are that bind them. That's right. We're, we're hearing of a lot of leaders meeting right now, meet, lead, meet leaders from the G20, the G7, the EU. But what makes NATO particularly different is that this is a defensive military alliance. Of course, uh, the G7, for example, uh, does include security considerations, but military is quite different. And so the fact that Poland uh, has now been affected by the war binds a lot of other NATO members to its fate uh, and means that certain articles in the NATO treaty can potentially be triggered. Now, NATO itself was formed to uh, defend certain nations from Russian aggression in Europe after World War II. And there's a real irony here because it's always been a major affront to President Putin. He's considered NATO and any potential expansion uh, as a security threat to Russia. And it was in some ways waning. It was less than three years ago that President Macron said that NATO is essentially brain dead right now. Mm. But by invading Ukraine, there's been a huge re resurgence of NATO because they've realized that the threat that existed after World War II is not gone. Uh, and in fact, that expansion I mentioned just there, it's, it's on the rise as well. If we take a look at a map of NATO countries and members in Europe, you'll see that there are some Eastern European countries that used to be allied with the Soviet Union, for example, Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania. These are countries that really their presence in the NATO alliance infuriates uh, President Putin. But there are also two countries highlighted there, Sweden and Finland, and those are countries that have now applied for NATO membership as a result of the invasion. And that is something that is uh, is something that President Putin has tried to combat all along. Mm. Now, Poland, uh, we understand, has requested a, a meeting of members on the basis of, of Article 4. Since NATO was created, 
Article 4 has been invoked several times, in fact, seven times um, since 1949. But all-out war isn't the default response, is it? It's not. And that's certainly something that countries are trying to avoid. It's actually been something that the West and NATO has been trying to avoid all along. Because as soon as uh, an Article 5, which is the principle of collective defense in NATO. The idea that when one member state uh, has been attacked, all of NATO has been attacked and therefore leads uh, to a proportionate response, leads to member states having to defend them. Uh, and that's something the West has very much wanted to avoid because sending troops on the ground is very different to sending aid and, and military forces uh, because it would mean that this global conflict that has uh, been happening would escalate. And that's exactly what countries are trying to avoid. Now, in terms in terms of Article 4, that's the step before. It's if a country, a member, member country of NATO feels that their territorial integrity, their political independence or their security has been threatened, then a meeting must be convened to discuss this. It's what precedes Article 5. Now, Article 5 doesn't necessarily follow. It's a huge step afterwards. The first mm. time it was triggered was after 9-11. That's how big a security threat it has to be. Uh, but certainly the fact that Poland has been, uh, has been affected by the war is going to mean that NATO members have to take this very seriously and try to conduct an investigation as to why this happened, who was responsible and whether it was intentional. So potentially a, a pivotal moment. Thank you very much, Azadeh, for coming in and, uh, and taking us through that. Thank you.